Uh, speaking at a convention in Las Vegas a few years ago, a young doctor sat next to me, and he said in the Vietnam War, uh, he had to bail out of a plane that was on fire, all alone, and minister to his wounds the best he could. He was not religious, but his sister had been sending him some pamphlets, and he had one in his pocket. And it was the Lord, the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So he said, he said, well, there's nothing else for me to do, I might as well repeat this. Yeah, his brother appeared to him. He said, stay here for a half an hour. The medics will come and take care of you. But he said, my brother was dead for one year, but he was my brother. And the medics came in a half an hour, as he told, as he predicted. And I asked him, uh, how did you know I was here? I asked them, rather, how did you know I was here? They said, an officer appeared and told us exactly where you were and what to give to you. Then they gave him morphine and bound up his wounds and took him in a helicopter. His brother disappeared. Something mysterious about it? No. Your loved ones are all around you. People of higher dimensions than mine can come here to go to any other planet they want to. You can look at it this way if you want to. The man prayed for deliverance. The subconscious answers in its own way. That way is hidden from you. You cannot possibly determine how your prayer is answered. You can't do it. If you begin to think of how, when, where, through what source, you are through. You can call that a dramatization of the subconscious. Or you can say the personality of a brother in the next dimension decides to precipitate himself and save him, save his brother. What? The subjective self is all wise. It knows only the answer. Uh, some years ago, uh, I was talking to a friend on the telephone, and uh, a sister of mine came in the door. Come. It was in Beverly Hills, California. Okay. And I asked her, why didn't you tell me you were coming? I would have met you on the plane. She came to Lowestoft, Suffolk, England. She had on her habit and rosary beads. She was a nun. And uh, uh, I gave her a cup of coffee. We conducted a vigorous conversation for six or seven minutes. Uh, she told me of the diagnosis of the doctor in Lowestoft, how she had passed on and that she wanted to let me know. And then after finishing the coffee, and if I talk back and forth to you, that's a personality, isn't it? The that's whole right. personality was there. You she like answered all questions intelligently. And she, her body dissolved, and then subsequent investigation showed that exactly at that moment in Lowestoft she had passed on. Uh, you see, you have bodies uh, to infinity. You have another body now. It's called a subtle body fourth dimensional body. Is that the Some people the have weird ideas about resurrection. When your loved one passes on, he or she, uh, you should rejoice in the new birthday. Everybody who passes on, murderer, cutthroat, or holy man, there's absolute bliss when that person passes on. This other body, which you have now, it's called a subtle body fourth dimensional body, but it's rarefied and attenuated. It can go through closed doors, yes. through solid metal. Yes. It's wherever it thinks it is. There's no time or space to the next dimension. Time and space is here. If anyone teaches time and space theories, they're not in truth. They're back in the old orthodox idea. So there are a, a, a dreams and visions of the night. Uh, which come to all of us at times. And you may see events before they happen. They are not foreordained. Nothing is predestined. There is no kismet, except I'm a crackpot. <laughs> uh, a professor in UCLA, University of California, a brilliant woman, oh. academically speaking, but, but you're not educated until you know the laws of your conscious and subconscious mind. Washington and London and other cities are full of educated fools, the derelicts. They're doing incalculable harm. Your government and the government of my country 
It's an exact mathematical duplication of the state of mind of 200 million people. You can't change the government until you change the minds of millions of people. And then as we change our mind, we change everything in the world. Now, there, here's a, an attorney who has a prolonged lawsuit. The other people are intransigent, intransigent, hard yielding, they're inflexible, very frustrating. And then you learn the laws of mind. Okay. In prayer, you always go to the end. And having seen the end, Plant? you have willed the means to the realization of the end. Yes, Look at it this favorite. way. You go into a movie. The man is going to be sent to the guillotine. It's all circumstantial evidence. Shame. He's really not guilty. They're all weeping and crying. At the last minute, he gets a reprieve. And they're all rejoicing. That's the end. You paid uh, six marks to see the movie. Sorry? You're going to wait for the beginning. You see the whole thing through. When it comes to the end, you're unmoved, undisturbed. You have seen the end, and the end is a happy ending. Can That's happy ending. called prayer. You always go to the end. So I told this attorney, to just still his mind to mobilize his attention, and to imagine that I was there. Mentally and spiritually, you are there. Your head is on the pillow and your eyes are closed and you can see me right in front of you. Yeah. That's the quickest, surest, most wonderful way in all the world to get an answer to your prayer. Select one person in the world who'd love to hear good news about you. It, <coughs> it isn't always a relative. Tell them nothing. But you always have one. If you don't, you're in trouble. Yeah. You must have one person in the world who'd love to hear good news about you. So all he did was uh, hear me say to him, congratulations and the harmonious ending. And he stopped giving any power to anybody else. Super the lovely. person who was most difficult, who's obstreperous, you couldn't talk to her. <coughs> you, you know, she's unmoved, oh, difficult. Uh, she yeah. died in her sleep. And then he said to me, he didn't know very much about the law, he said, I didn't want you to kill her. <laughs> the law works its own way, and always you contemplate the happy ending, the divine solution. That's right. Now, there was a, a waiter in Honolulu, and he said that there was another man, he was very successful in life. He said another man, uh, Kahuna, was practicing voodoo against him, and, uh, black magic, and that everything was going wrong in his life. <laughs> now, this that, right? is the most stupid thing in all the world. It's like the, pe the person who takes the word Lucifer literally, you know. I saw Lucifer fall from heaven. How art thou fallen, O Lucifer? Lucifer is the light. Well, light falls on earth, doesn't it? And we have limitation, don't we? Uh, Chicago is several thousand miles away from you. That's your limitation. So it's through our limitation that we discover our divinity. So Lucifer means light. But if the light in thee be darkness, how great is the darkness. Now... How could light be darkness? If I have knowledge and information given to me about God and life and afterlife, and it's all false, then the light in me is darkness. How great is that darkness? How great is that ignorance? How great is that brainwashing? How great is that hypnotic message of the world? All right. Now, if the light in thee be darkness, yes. and I give you true knowledge of God, then I see Satan, the false idea, fall like lightning from heaven. A boy of seven can understand it, but not the theologian. He's sick. He needs to take a little more vodka. Well, anyhow, uh, I told this uh, man, a waiter, I knew him, but he believed that a voodoo spell was cast on him. No, nobody has any power to hurt you. Who shall hurt you if you're a follower of that which is good? No evil shall befall the just. No Come. plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. If God be for me, who on earth can be against me? Ben. One with God is a majority. That's if my thoughts are God's thoughts, Zero. God's power is with my thoughts of good. If I can give it, I cannot receive it. So supposing you have 10,000 people uh, saying that you drop dead, they hate the sight of you and get some terrible disease, 
It all goes back to them, boomerangs, because you can't give it. I told, I gave this man a simple prayer. I said, read the 91st Psalm three times out loud at night and morning. It's the great protective psalm. It builds up an immunity. You become God intoxicated. You build up the divine antibody. Then I gave him a simple prayer. I said, close your eyes several times a day and imagine you're in the sacred circle of God's eternal love. This way. The light of God surrounds me. The light of God enfolds me. The light of God enwraps me. It is possible to see the light. You may or may not, but it is possible. Then you're invulnerable, invincible, impervious to all harm. Nothing can touch you. You're immunized. Whenever you think, I told them, whenever you think of that man whom you say is practicing black magic, say, God loves me and cares for me. And God be with you, my young man. Yeah, How him. on earth could he be hurt? He well, can't so perceive true. it. He's giving a benediction. A boomerang to this man. He's he sent me a clipping from the Honolulu advertiser. He went to the grocery store, this man. He said? dropped dead on Holmes. the way home. He killed himself. Because he's sending it out. The other can't receive it. It boomerangs and recoils with double force. And the, uh, he killed himself. You see? Well, that's very very simple way. Hate kills love and peace and harmony and joy and vitality. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so murder is of the heart. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill. It does not say that at all. It says, thou shalt do no murder. It's written in Hebrew. And murder is of the heart. And millions of people are murdering morning, noon, and night. They're murdering love, peace, harmony, joy, goodwill, forbearance, Common. wealth, Fem- happiness, the, 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 and all the blessings of life. Keep it up. Death may come some way, through a bullet or through cancer. <clears throat> Uh, that's a uh, simple truth, but you see, the, a lot of people take the Bible literally and they go absolutely balmy. You know, it's like Judge Stroud of India. He was giving a lecture in London. He said, there is no devil. Devil is of evil, misuse of law. So a woman said to him, you said there was no devil. Gave it he said, talk, uh, what do you want him for, yourself? Physique? For your husband? For your uh, sister? He said, what the devil do you want him for? <laughs> You know, uh, many people, uh, because of weird religious beliefs, the insane asylums are full of them. And they all have personal saviors. Uh, They have gangsters in charge of their mind, which play havoc with them. This professor of psychiatry was going through uh, the ward of a hospital, religious ward. And he said to this man, he said, who are you? He said, I'm Stalin. But he said, the last time we were here, you said you were Lincoln. He said, that Lincoln was by design. my first wife. That's how balmy people get. Troward, when he went to India, uh, he went into a certain home. His wife was asleep. She woke up suddenly. She saw a man in the room. He put a gun to his head. He said, don't worry. Don't worry. And he shot himself in the cell on the street. She woke him up. She woke toward up her husband. Yeah. And she said, I'm not asleep. I'm not in a trance. And here's this Englishman, the English officer. He's right there. He said, don't worry. And he puts a gun to his head and shoots himself. Troward then went to the woman who leased them the apartment. And she said, yes, there was an English officer that shot himself in that room one year ago. And they gave him another room. Now, Troward explained it. He was a great uh, mystic, you know. He wrote these inimitable textbooks on mental science. He told Harry Gaze, an old friend of mine, Harry Gaze knew him intimately in London. One time he said to Raja, send for him for dinner in the evening. Send a horse and, you know, a carriage, four horses and a carriage. And uh, he was brought to the Raja's home. And there was a big steel door. The uh, driver of the car went through the door. Troward said, I had to wait and press the bell for the butler to open up. He said, that fellow knew more than I did. And Sir Alexander Cannon, 
Tibetan, who wrote many books, uh, an authority on Tibetan India. He was going to a lamasserie in Tibet, and they went the wrong way. They came to a great chasm, great divide, chasm, uh, water between mountains. They couldn't cross. They lost their way. He said, uh, the Lama, one of the monks, appeared. He said, I know you're visiting our lamasserie. He said, I'll lift you up. They were all levitated across to the bank. All this is according to law, but a higher law, like a plane leaves the earth. It seems to overcome the law of gravity, but it does not. It conforms to a specialization of the law. For all is law, and all is love. Uh, so Trord explained it this way. Trord he said had a <clears throat> that the suicidal man, the suicide, left an impression, a photographic, photographic pattern in the psychic atmosphere, which exists all around us. That's why a person, a good medium, in a deep trance, can look back and see George Washington kneeling on the snow. It doesn't mean that she's George Washington. Identify with him. We have two psychologists in Beverly Hills, California. California. One says Lincoln is roaming around in 50 men, and Washington about 100 walking around. All crazy, all nuts. Don't you know that you were all men who ever lived and ever will live? Common. A common sense tells you, spiritually speaking, you've been everywhere. You've visited all countries, all countries are within you. You wrote all languages. You've been everywhere, you've seen everything. You've heard everything, spiritually speaking. When the morning stars sang together, and the sons of God shouted for joy, you were there, Joseph. You wrote all languages, you were all men who ever lived. You were Jesus, you were Moses, Elijah, and Buddha. Elijah, Confucius, because spirit has played all roles, wore all garments. It's plain, harsh sense. A child could understand it because if he's seven years old. If uh, when you uh, conclude with a prayer, if could you conclude with a prayer later on and uh, include those uh, can suffer those people suffering from cancer? Right, fine, there sure. are a couple of them here. Very good. Fine. That's good. Well, now, uh, I bring that out so that you'll realize that you've been everywhere. You've seen everything. You wrote all the Bibles of the world. You spoke all languages. You're all men who ever lived and will live because we're all garments which God wears as we move through the illusion of time and space. Don't you know that the word individual means the indivisible one? That's why you know. That's why you've been everywhere and seen everything. It doesn't mean because you go back into re, uh, regression and you see Lincoln that you are Lincoln. You know, the psychologist put Pat into a trance. Oh, no, no just uh, uh, John, put John into a trance. And uh, his suggestion that he gives to himself is greater than the suggestion of the psychologist. He said, who were you 200 years ago? No, no answer. He said, 500 years ago, where, who were you? Yeah. Not a word. He said, a thousand years ago, not a word. He said, uh, who were you before England and Ireland were ever formed? He said, on the seventh day I rested. <laughs> Your subconscious will give the operator what that operator wants, even silently, if he doesn't say a word. It's the great harlot of the mysteries. I'll give you anything you want. Well, uh, George brought an interesting thing. He said, in the psychic atmosphere, the suicide, suicidal thing is there, never lost. Yeah. That's why there's nothing lost in my holy mountain. It's true that a psychic, a sensitive, can look back thousands of years and see something happening. Yeah. But it doesn't mean she's Cleopatra. You were all men, whoever lived, whoever will live, who are living now. All right, let's have our silent prayer now. <clears throat> and first of all, say to yourself, <laughs> I forgive myself for harboring negative thoughts of any kind. If there's anyone who's ever hurt me or injured me in any way, shape, or form, I fully and freely forgive that person or persons now. I am sincere, I mean this, and I decree it. I wish for them all the blessings of life. 
when any one of them comes into my mind, I will say, I have released you to God. God be with you. After a while, I can meet that person in my mind, and there will be no sting there. I will rejoice at hearing good news about that person. Now, if I can't, if I can't rejoice in hearing good news about the person who wronged me, it means that's my problem. It's a poison pocket in my subconscious. Therefore, you continue blessing the other and forgiving yourself. And you know very well that love casts out fear, hate, jealousy, everything unlike itself. We have no alibi. We have no excuse. Now, having forgiven ourselves and others, then we can pray. Because when you stand praying, forgive if you walk against any. Common sense tells you you can't pour distilled water into a dirty vessel and have clean water. Likewise, the Holy Spirit cannot flow through a contaminated mind. How can a person get a healing who's full of resentment, self-condemnation, antagonism, criticism, ill will? That's their sickness. You must get rid of the cause. Then the effect passes away. All right. So now, no matter what your problem is, having forgiven everybody and having forgiven yourself for harboring negative thoughts, to forgive is to give for. Forgive and forget mean the same thing. All right, now, you say, I've forgiven myself for harboring negative thoughts, and I resolve not to do that anymore. Then I remind myself of the great truths of life. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord thy God. I will come and heal thee. I will restore health unto thee and heal thee of thy wounds. Say the Lord my God. God is guiding you now. There is right action in your life. God's healing love saturates your whole being. God's healing love dissolves every single thing unlike itself. God's river of peace flows through your mind and your heart. The healing light of God flows through every atom of my being, making me whole, pure, relaxed, and perfect. The love, the light, and the glory of God flow through me in transcendent loveliness, saturating my whole being so that my whole body dances to the rhythm of the eternal God. My mind is full of peace and poise, balance and equilibrium. For I am full of faith in God, in life, in the universe, in all good things. Whatever the problem is right now, do not dwell on the problem, but realize the infinite healing presence which made you from a cell is the only healing power there is. It knows all the processes and functions of your body. And you quietly say to yourself, this healing power of God is focused, focused at that point in my subconscious mind where the problem is. And God's healing light dissolves it and neutralizes it, making way for the Holy Spirit to flow through me making me whole and perfect now. Now, in the silence of your soul, you imagine you're talking to your higher self, the God in you. And then you're very humble. And you say, Father, thou knowest all things. You're all wise. You're the only healing power there is. I'm your son. I'm your daughter. I know you love me, and I know you care for me. And this very moment, I'm giving thanks for the miraculous healing power flowing through me now. The grateful heart is always close to God. The grateful heart lacks nothing. The grateful heart is never sick, never impoverished, never frustrated, never lonesome. That's why silently you say, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me now. And I know thou hearest me always. Then silently, Repeat to yourself, thank you for the miraculous healing, over and over again. Lull yourself to sleep with the word thank you. <coughs> the peace of God fills your soul, and according to your faith is it done unto you. 
and wonders happen as you pray.